You know how many great points the internet will never see? Might as well throw it all away. Xander, you'd probably dropped so many wisdom bombs today. We had a fun episode today. Josh Pertel, an uh, industry friend of mine, I met him when he was working on growth at Tilting Point. He is currently working on growth and product at a startup called Carbonated Games. We were really excited about the game there they have in early beta that they're planning on shipping this year. So uh, he's a sharp dude. I really like talking to him. He's like, uh, yeah, so Josh is just someone in the industry I have a lot of respect for. And he has a really good blog where I've been following it more recently, and he's been doing really good write-ups on the earning seasons and kind of future predictions for some of the companies we watch really closely in the space, like Netflix, like EA, like Microsoft. And so we just did, what are the state of a few of the titans in the space right now? And just getting the opinions to someone who's been researching and writing some thoughtful pieces on that. And yeah, what did you think, Xander? Any takeaways from that or any thoughts? Yeah, I think Inside on Netflix is interesting. It's a topic that we talk about a lot. And they actually come up two places at this podcast. It's like, what is the role of subscriptions in games? Right. And I think Netflix and Game Pass, Microsoft, those are the two guys who are trying to really hard. Obviously, Apple is also cracking at that. But these are the two folks who are really, really investing deeply here right now. And we'll see whether or not they're going to be big businesses. I mean, they're obviously like large businesses, but like I think there's an unknown impact of how the subscription model is going to work so far. So we talked a little bit about that, which I thought was interesting. Awesome. Well, well we hope you all enjoyed the episode with and, Josh Bertel of Carbonated Games. Welcome everyone to Games Growth with Uptick. And this week we're really excited to have an industry friend that I really enjoyed speaking with, you know, brainstorming now and then, Josh Spertel, who is currently VP of Product and Growth at Carbonated Inc. Welcome to the show, Josh. Thank you, Warren. It's great to be seen. Josh has a really good blog called stoicmusings.xyz. He posted a piece that caught my eye a few weeks back. This was late January. That was a thoughtful piece on Netflix. And I appreciate this because Netflix has been a company that we have been paying more and more attention to here at Uptick for two reasons. One is they've moved more heavily into gaming the last few years. And the other being that they are slowly but surely becoming a more ads-driven business. And so becoming more relevant to us as marketers. And I kind of view this as the 4.0 era of Netflix on the horizon with the you know, 1.0 being DVDs in the mail, 2.0 being subscription, 3.0 being a content house, and now this to be defined fourth era. So really, that's kind of what prompted this episode with Josh. But since then, he's also done two really thoughtful pieces on EA's recent earnings and Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. So it's going to be a three-parter today. We're going to dig into Netflix, EA, and then Microsoft slash Activision Blizzard. So yeah, let's dig into it, Josh. I mean, up top, catch us up. I know it's your first time on the show and not everyone may be aware of what Carbonated is doing. Is there anything you'd like to share about Carbonated and what you guys are building before we dig into our main topics? Yeah, I'd love to. So Carbonated is a first party game studio. We are powered by a platform called Carbine. And Carbine provides a bunch of developer toolings like localization, crafting and systems, and you know allows us to really kind of build a very good forever live ops game. We are bringing to market a game called Mad World. Mad World is a third person shooter set in present day dystopia and it's a web three game. And we have a territory control backbone to it. And it's really going to, I think, disrupt the web three space as well as the free to play space. It's definitely a game that's free to play in the front and web three and back. And so we are using a lot of best in class systems from the free to play gaming and incorporating it into a, a web three world. Awesome. And thank you for referencing the Web 2.5 mullet as we've been trying to catch on free to play in the front, blockchain in the back. And yeah, I think I'd love to you know have you come back and do a deep dive on the game as we get closer to launch. But for today, I think you know getting some of your takes on the state of the industry and some of the big movers and shakers is going to be super interesting for our listeners. So shall we start with Netflix? Sounds great. Netflix, I think, is doing some really, really interesting things on the game side of things. When we kind of look at the history of what's been going on, the streaming gaming category, a lot of it has been a lot of trial and error. And it's a very crawl, walk, run type of strategy that has kind of been happening. And so typically you have to build up a little bit of a liquidity and a library and a system of games to kind of run. And so what has historically happened is there's been, you know, partnerships and alignment, bringing studios in and getting those games onto the platform and building some infrastructure and support around those things. I think one of the challenges is most of the gaming ca- games that have been on these platforms like Netflix and Apple Arcade, 
have historically been games that haven't monetized well on the app stores where they haven't gotten discovery or high amounts of user acquisition and a profitable way to kind of do it. So you kind of have these capped games from a market value, from a player sentiment standpoint, and they're kind of getting put in onto these platforms. And so adoption has been relatively low, right? And mm-hmm. so that's a little unfortunate because the aspiration is to be able to go to Netflix and get your content there, whether you like watching Orange is the New Black, or you like playing Grand Theft Auto or one of their Stranger Things games, right? And so, you know, unfortunately, I think there's been like a little bit of a disconnect between what games are going to really kind of drive engagement and what games are actually listed on the store now. Now, there has been some success with Grand Theft Auto as of recent, and I think Netflix overall is going to get a little bit fit in their selection process of the games just so that they can really get some high adoption and player engagement on those bits. And Josh, to the best of your knowledge, has Netflix been transparent with what the economics are of publishing a game through Netflix, like how that revenue is shared? You mentioned retention, but is there like any public information on what those models typically look like? Yeah, they, they've been keeping it pretty close to order. So yeah. Digging a little bit into specifically like the game subset of Netflix, How meaningful part of their business do you anticipate that to be both this year and next year? Do we view this truly like a pillar of this next era of Netflix, which I was early describing as kind of like this fourth era? Or do we see it still more as like an experimental playground where they haven't really decided how much of their overall business games is going to drive? Yeah, great question. So based on their last earnings call, it sounds like they're taking a pretty prudent approach. And so they're going to be very conservative in their decisions and really kind of go after high margin, high ROI things, right? So they're going to be a bit more reserved on their selection. So I anticipate that the growth is going to be there, but probably slow. Like when you look at Netflix's business, Netflix is a verb, but then also Orange is the New Black and House of Cards and all the great titles that they've had are really zeitgeist moments. And so they're really going to really try to lean into that brand verbiage that they've had in the past. So I expect that it's going to be slow growth. They're going to be conservative in their bets. I would say that they're probably more focused on their ad sides of the business than they are on the game side, at least based on like their current hiring plans. But it's really TBD on the game stuff. I think they continue with it and they're going to march forward. But I think it is going to be a slow adoption curve. Awesome. So Josh, you alluded that games is still something that they're approaching relatively conservatively. And I think that makes sense. I don't think it's really clear what success in gaming looks like with Netflix. I mean, ideally, it's something that increases retention with them or increases adoption. But it seems like they don't have clear kind of attribution around that yet, like within their own assessment of how the games business is doing. Like, I mean, they're still strangely positioned because they own like the linear television space. So dominantly right now, not linear, but like video on demand space they're really trying to try some new interesting stuff like did you guys play vanderblitz i believe it's called do you guys try that that was their like narrative storytelling yep. that was built into the native netflix app no it's, i've done it it's, it's kind of old it was one of their first cracks at it but basically a television show you could watch but you would make selections about where the action would go you can imagine that the reason they're investing so deeply here is because they're trying to find incremental and new ways to sort of develop a video on demand medium in a way that I think adding games talent is a really obvious way to do it. But they're doing a very, very, they're basically aren't monetizing them. Which is almost like they see it as a, I don't know if subsidy is the right word, but a way to know that they can fund a game going to market without having to solely front the capital and then hope that they can make the returns back on the launch. So it, it becomes this kind of self-selecting group of not necessarily worse games by any means, but maybe games that don't scale via the traditional growth marketing machines of mobile as much. Would you agree with that or any corrections to that? Yeah, I do agree with that. And what you're optimizing for in those games too is a little bit different, right? So on a monetization or a growth free-to-play type game, you're going for impulse purchases and excitement, those like splashy moments to kind of drive engagement on Apple Arcade or Netflix, you're really going for retention, right? Like that's where the value accrual is going in. The game loops are a bit different. And so I think structurally, yes, you get to kind of get the development costs, but then also the type of game that you're bringing to market is a little bit different from what you would traditionally expect on the free-to-play market. Yeah, as far as we see, it's just an engagement tool, right? It's kind of expanding the user base, having more tools, piling in and bundling their service, right? When you think about how people are like using Netflix now, like it actually is very multi-purpose, right? You can sit and watch with your family at night, or you can have it in the background while you're cooking dinner, right? So with right. gaming, I think the challenge on streaming services has always been there has to be intent to sit down and play. 
right? And right. so Netflix kind of has either a passive or active usage, and that's just streaming in general. But kind of incorporating this like active, I need to sit down, think about it, and kind of do these things. It's very different like consumer behavior. And I think that's part of the challenge why this adoption curve has been a little bit slow is because how the consumer perceives the product is actually different from how you would engage with in a game. So I think, yes, gamifying like an interactive is a new way to do that, but it takes a while to adopt those things, right? And so I think right. like they're going to slowly kind of do these tests and kind of have their wins, stack them and kind of incorporate them. I'd imagine those interactive elements too are going to be very useful in like their ads business, right? Because you can imagine right. contextual ads and there's like commerce that can happen directly within it. So the games teams could extend out to like, more of a global systems function and then also introduce these like interesting gameplays. But I think there has to be some change in how people perceive and use Netflix in order for games to really kind of like accelerate. 